The idea of a function is like a black box. You give it inputs, it gives you outputs. Okay. What happens inside of the function? That's the function body, the definition of the function. But think even the curly braces. Okay. But in some sense, the reason why we have functions is they allow us to abstract our code. I can use a function, and as long as I have like good documentation that tells me what it's doing, I don't have to worry about how it happens to be implemented. Um, it just, I care about what I give it and what I get back. Okay. So for example, when we, we were using that function that turned things to uppercases, that you know, there's like a two upper two tie or whatever. Uh, those functions, all I care about is that they do what I expect them to do. How it's actually implemented doesn't matter that much. And that's why we call it a black box. Right? So that's why we use functions. Functions make your code easier to understand by abstracting away details. So we've we've seen a function main. We every Go program has a main function. So you have to, this is where it starts. That's where every function uh, program is going to start is at that main function. So let's create another function. We saw this example, right? This was the looping over and getting the average. Um, so this is a great candidate for a function. When you see something like this that's pretty general, uh, you know, like, you don't want to just be doing this in line all the time. You can create a function. So this is how you'll, the process of creating a function. Uh, in general, you come up with a name for what you want the function to be. So we're going to call ours average, right? And then I'm just putting panic and that's just not implemented. I haven't made this function yet. And by doing panic, if, if I tried to use it, I would immediately get an error. Like, oh yeah, I forgot to implement that. Um, so it's, it's a good, that's like a nice thing if, if you are just sketching out functions and you don't want to implement them yet, you can use panic to do that. Um, so in our main function, we have our original list here, right? Our slice of float 64s. And the way we call our function is like this, okay? Mm. And so, okay, so we pass in the slice to the function that becomes bound to this variable, okay? So these, these, these are, are available inside of here. So we can copy our code from the other one this bit here, and put it here. So this is the same code we saw before, except instead of printing it out, we're going to return it. Okay? And so now, when I invoke this function, when I call this function, I give it the slice and it's going to give me back a number. And that number will be the average of that with some numbers. Okay? So the basic structure is you have your function name, you have parameters, which can be zero or more. So we can have a function like this. That's a function that takes nothing. Okay, has no parameters. You can also do int y int. So that's a function that takes two parameters. Um, and you could keep doing that. You could add a lot more. And they can be of any type, and ex et cetera. Uh, and then after that, after the closing parentheses here, you have a return type. This can be an int. Um, but the return type is optional. Main doesn't have a return type because it doesn't return anything. Okay? But average does, it returns the average. So it has a return type. And then you call it by just using parentheses around. And you can pass in the right number of arguments. So this is where types start to become really helpful. Okay? They allow us to enforce the contract between our functions and how we use them. So in JavaScript, I could pass anything to Right? And it would just like either give me really strange results or throw exceptions. But in Go, I can't do that. If I try to pass in a number here, the compiler will tell me you're not allowed to do that. That's invalid. Uh, cannot use five type in as type slice of flight float 64. Okay? So that's where the strong types are nice, is that they enforce that contract for us. They make it so that we can't pass in the wrong type of data to our functions. Uh, it has to match them. So, so, I mean, functions are a great thing to use and you should be putting them in your code. And in fact, all the examples we've been doing should have been their own functions code, right? Um, we shouldn't have just been doing it in main. Most programs in your main should be pretty small. Hmm. Like, main should go, go do a bunch of work and just print results or whatever you're wanting to do with it. But you shouldn't put the bulk of the work inside main. You should do it in functions, okay? 
Any questions about the functions so far? So the reason you have to do the array club 64 on the function definition of average is because that's what it has to match what you're passing into it. The type estimate. This that's estimate what you're saying. That it has to match. Yeah. So whatever you define that array as, it has to match that in the function definition. This this bit here. Yeah. That's what has to match. Right there. Now what does not have to match is this. The name you give it is completely up to you, okay? So if I change this to wise, that's perfectly valid, okay? So the x is here is a different variable than the y's up there. And go copies everything, okay? Now that's a little confusing because it turns out in this case that's not quite right. Um, but normally, if you like pass in an int, it's going to copy the int. So if you changed it up here, it's not going to change it over here. Okay. It just so happens that with the slice, the slice is a pointer. And when we talk about pointers, we'll get more detail. But basically, it is copy, but it refers to the same place. And so if you modify it, you could modify it anywhere here. Okay. But if you, copy, if you pass in an array, not a slice, then it would be a copy. And if you modified it, it wouldn't change the output. Um, but we're not modifying it, we're just referencing it. Okay. And so, that, that's how we build these kinds of functions. So you definitely should be using functions uh, for your code. Let's look through what we have here. Um, and so here's the example we just <coughs> call average. So the names of have they don't have to match. Um, the other important component here, this is the scope that we talked about. So if I have x here, right? And my average function does not have access to this x. I cannot print here. Okay? Um, because the scope of x is inside these curly braces. It doesn't exist inside of those curly braces. Okay? So the only thing that this has access to is the stuff outside of all this the top level declarations, other packages, et cetera, or the things you pass into it. But it doesn't have access to the things that are local. It turns out there are languages that would let you do that kind of stuff, but Go is not one of them. And most aren't like that. Uh, but I just wanted to make that clear. So uh, this is the idea of the stack, this picture. Uh, you know, you have main, call f1, and build the stack, and the stack. Every time you return, the stack comes down again. We saw that with memory. That's the idea with the functions. Okay. Um, so other things that we can do, we can give a name to the return type which is unusual, but you can do that. So we can do this. Um, that's, you don't see that very often. It's better to just return the expression than to assign it and then return. But you can do this if you want. Uh, so I've given a name to my return value. Mm -hmm. That's an unusual. Well, that's helpful if you do multiple returns, right? Yeah, there's some cases where it's helpful. But it's pretty unknown. Speaking of which, uh, the place you sometimes see it is to document the meaning of the return type. So in a case like average, it's clear what the return type is. The average is the average. But sometimes it's not clear what the return, what it is returning. It says, oh, int. You're like, well, what does it mean? What is the meaning of the int? You can do comment that and give a documentation that way, or you can give it a name, and then when people see the function definition, they'll see, oh, uh, error, error. Oh, that's an error. So you can see the name of the parameter. In general, you should just not name your return values. But you, you will see it sometimes. That's why I want to cover it. So here's how you do multiple. Uh, if you want to return multiple things, you put them in parentheses and then comma between all the types. So I can return two integers by five, <coughs> comma six. Uh, Python has a similar idea. Uh, so that's how you return multiple things. And so if you were to think of some of these functions we've used that return like OK, it returns two things. It's going to look something like that. Okay. Um, and you can call it like this. So f returns two things, x and y. Pretty straightforward. Um, here's another thing that's important. It turns out, uh, so when we were looking at this function, it takes one thing, right? So it has a fixed size. Sometimes you want to be able to take 
a sort of unknown number of things, right? Um, and so you can use the special dot, dot, dot instead. And what this lets you do is now I can say, and I don't have to create this slice. And that works the same way. So same basic idea, except now I'm allowed to pass numbers as many as I want. And so you see that special dot, 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 that means a very, it's a very added function that takes any number of book 64s. Uh, and then I use this wise just like a slice. So it's basically the same as a slice of book 64. Okay? But you'll sometimes see that. In fact, we've been using it all along. Uh, if we go to Godoc and look at uh, format, here we have format. If we look at the definition of print line, after all the docs here, uh, print line, there's our very added function. Okay? So that means you can pass as many things as you want to print line. Okay. We will talk about what that means later. Uh, but notice it returns, and they've documented their, their return types. Um, but, okay. so, it's a very attic function. Um, the next bit here is going to get confusing, so <laughs> maybe we'll do some of these problems and come back to these others, okay? So this first problem, sum is a function which takes a slice of number and adds them together. What would its function signature look like in Go? So somebody over here in our scratch, which I'm going to erase. Gone, okay. So somebody want to write out what that definition would look like, so the sum function. Who's doing it? Raise your hand. Does nobody know? Yeah, everybody's sum. waiting for somebody else. We saw average. Sum's probably going to look pretty similar, right? So we, we want to do a, a sum func? We want to create a sum func. Func, sum, parentheses, curlies. Now we got three people creating it. <laughs> Code war. 